Cash Money Records is an American record label founded in 1991 by brothers Ronald Slim Williams and Brian Birdman Williams. Ronald, a.k.a. Slim, was born May 23, 1964, and Brian was born February 15, 1969. Interestingly, Birdman's father refrained from signing his birth certificate, leading to him initially adopt his mother's surname. For almost a month subsequent to his birth, he lacked an official first name and was simply recognized as Baby, a moniker he still carries to this present day. Baby and Slim's parents were Gladys Brooks and Johnny Williams. Johnny is a former member of the military with a diverse entrepreneurial portfolio, including ownership of multiple establishments in New Orleans, such as a bar and a laundromat. Johnny's bar, named Gladys after his wife, gained notoriety as a favored gathering spot for a colorful mix of patrons, including hustlers, drug dealers, pimps, prostitutes, and businessmen. Brian and Ronald's childhood was marked by adversity. The Williams brothers, together with their siblings, initially lived in a small apartment above their family's bar. Tragedy struck when their mother, Gladys, passed away in 1975, leading to the children being cared for by their uncle and a two-year stay in Canada. At around age eight or nine, Brian entered a boy's home due to the absence of a legal guardian, while their father, Johnny, remarried Patricia. A turning point occurred when Johnny discovered his children were in foster care, sparking a legal battle in the mid-70s. Eventually, Johnny and Patricia regained full custody of the children, leading to Brian's name change to Brian Williams. They moved to the Magnolia Projects in Central City, New Orleans, where they established their new home. Living quarters were cramped, which led to territorial disputes among the siblings, but Baby developed a close friendship with his stepbrother Eldrick Wise. Wise mentored Baby on street survival and moving as a hustler. They started to deal drugs which led to his credibility, notoriety, and big money. On the other hand, Ronald Slim Williams was a quiet one who spent most of his time being natured by their father, Johnny. By the age of 16, Baby owned several cars, which he kept a few blocks away from his home so his parents wouldn't see them. When he was 16, Baby and Wise were arrested by the police for gun and possession after a raid which resulted in thousands of dollars being taken by the police. They were later freed after they were, they were bonded out by Johnny and Birdman's stepmother Patricia. Subsequently, at the age of 18, both encountered legal trouble once more, this time due to drug possession, resulting in a three-year sentence at Elaine Hunt Correctional Center. Of the two, Brian served 18 months before eventually being acquitted of all allegations. Wise was found shot to death in a robbery attempt in 1991. When he got out of prison, Baby was determined to make money using legal means. He did not want to live the street life again. He began to hang more with his brother Ronald Slim Williams. Slim was always the quiet, laid-back one, but the influence of his father, Johnny Williams, was strong. He had a mind for business and thought constantly about how he could make money. To go with Slim's hungry mind for business, his brother Baby had keen hustling instincts. Baby had gotten the idea of starting a rap label from his brother, Eldrick, who'd wanted to be a rapper before he was shot and killed at the age of 20. During the 1980s, as hip-hop surged in popularity throughout the United States, distinct elements and forms of the genre were embraced by various regions, often influenced by the unique characteristics of their local cultures. The West Coast had a laid-back, funk-oriented sound, Miami had the big bass and the East Coast had breakbeats and a hard edge. Within New Orleans, a sound and aesthetic known as bounce music garnered the fascination of the youth from that era. Baby and Slim hatched a plan to incorporate bounce music plus New Orleans dance culture to make great records. Baby was already known in the city for his hustling abilities in the Magnolia projects as well as his past robbery sprees with his stepbrother Eldrick Wise, who had a reputation in the city before he was murdered. Master P, affiliated with No Limit and Take FO Records, was already making big money and profits within the realm of New Orleans hip-hop. Baby and Slim searched deeper on the New Orleans hip-hop scene and seeing that only two companies were producing bounce music, the Williams brothers saw an opportunity to enter the hip-hop hustle. By the age of 20, Baby asserts that he had amassed a million dollars through his dealings in the streets. 
This narrative gave rise to speculations that cash money records was initiated using street-derived funds. Baby and Slim got inspiration from the Cash Money Brothers gang featured in the film New Jack City, which was a source of inspiration at the time. The two brothers hoped to create their own empire much like Nino Brown did in the film, albeit a more legal and sustainable one. Baby and Slim quickly went to work on recruiting talent for their fledgling label. Cash Money Headquarters was an office building on the corner of Rampart and Tulane, an area that had once been New Orleans' Chinatown. Cash Money's first artist was a local named Kilo G. He was only 14 when he first met Baby and Slim. Kilo G was too young to sign a contract so the Williams brothers had to take a ferry across the river to find his grandmother so she could sign in his place. In 1992, after turning 15, Kilo G's debut album, The Sleepwalker, was released. It was produced by Big Row and Goldfingers. Big Row met Brian Williams in 1992 through a friend who worked at the counter at Peaches Records, which was located on Gentilly Boulevard in New Orleans. This was after Big Row had returned home from Houston, where he'd been working and producing for a hip-hop group known as Ghetto Boys. Baby was a fan of the Ghetto Boys and really wanted to have Big Row produce music for Kilo G. Big Row worked on Kilo G's album. Before they relied on local distributors like Gonzalez Music and Southwest Distribution, the Williams brothers sold copies of the album out of their car. Kilo's album was not well received as the music felt out of place as compared to the high energy and catchy bounce rap dominating New Orleans at the time. The Williams brothers had a theory on why the album did not do well. They felt that the Sleepwalker album with songs like Psychopathic Killer and Kill This Family was full of horror and menace and nobody would dance to those songs. Bounce music was taking off in New Orleans at that time. The Williams brothers decided to recruit a new producer, so Cash Money and Big Row went their separate ways. With one rapper in the game, the Williams brothers continued to recruit others. They struck gold when Baby convinced a local DJ named DJ Manny Fresh, whom they had been introduced to by their friend, Ziggler to Wiggler, to become their in-house producer. Before that, Fresh was a member of New Orleans' pioneering hip-hop group, New York Incorporated, before he joined forces with MC Gregory D, forming one of the city's most successful musical acts. However, as Manny's collaboration with Gregory D reached its conclusion, he forged a pivotal alliance with Cash Money in 1993. This would be a defining moment for Cash Money Records and hip-hop music in New Orleans. Manny Fresh swiftly established himself as the resident producer for Cash Money, embedding his signature bounce production style into the label's endeavors. Recording sessions in those years mostly took place at Manny Fresh's house. Fresh would at first frequently produce releases for other local labels before he became Cash Money's in-house producer. Manny displayed an unmatched work ethic, ultimately crafting the production for every record the label put forth over the span of a decade. By the release of his second album in 1995, titled The Bloody City, Kilo G discovered a renewed sense of energy and inspiration drawn from the raw material of his own life. Nearly every song on the Bloody City album finds him relentlessly predicting the circumstances of his death. On January 15, 1997, Kilo G was shot and killed in De Gaulle Manor. At the time, he was 20 years old and the father of two children. In 1993, the roster expanded with notable groups like UNLV and Projects Most Wanted as well as solo acts such as Pimp Daddy, Cook Specialist, Miss T, and Lil Slim. The Projects Most Wanted was a group from New Orleans, Louisiana, Iberville Projects. It was composed of Big Man, Big Heavy, and Black Jack. They released one tape before signing with Cash Money Records where they released the first album of the Manny Fresh Reign at Cash Money with their debut Legalize, Past the Weed, in 1993. The album also featured new signees Lil Slim, UNLV, and Mr. Ivan, as well as Port Arthur, Texas's Bun B of UGK fame. In 1994, they recorded High Life that marked a more important moment for the label as it boasted a guest appearance by UGK's Bun B. On the other hand, UNLV members Tech 9, Lil Ye, and the charismatic Yellow Boy seemed tailor made for Manny Fresh's production as UNLV's debut sixth and Barone reportedly sold an astounding 40,000 copies with barely any promotion. 
The group also sparked the enduring feud between Cash Money and their rival New Orleans hip-hop label, Big Boy Records, by alleging that Partners in Crime had copied UNLV style. Later, following a disagreement with Birdman, it was rumored that Yellow Boy attacked and damaged Birdman's car with gunfire. The actual facts remained elusive, but UNLV parted ways with the label, and Yellow Boy tragically lost his life in what appeared to be a botched robbery in New Orleans. The remaining members later resolved their royalty dispute with Cash Money Records in 2006. Birdman performed under the name B32 during the early years. B32 stands for Baby with the 32 Golds. He released the song, I Need a Bag of Dope in 1993. During the same year, Lil Slim signed with Cash Money Records. When he was fresh out of high school, Lil Slim met Baby and Slim through a friend of theirs named Ziggler De Wiggler, who was recruiting for Cash Money Records at that time. While with Cash Money, he released The Game is Cold, Powder Shop, and Thug In and Plug In Classic. Lil Slim's first album, The Game is Cold, was recorded in Baby's Kitchen since at that time, they had no proper studio. Baby would pick him and go pick up Manny Fresh together with his equipment then would go to Baby's house for recording. After making three albums for them in as many years, by 1995 Lil Slim began to think that his earnings weren't matching up to the amount of albums he was selling which later saw him leave Cash Money Records. During his time at Cash Money, his lasting legacy may arguably be as the man who introduced Lil Wayne to Cash Money. Slim knew a young Dwayne Carter since they both lived in Hollygrove, located in the city's 17th ward. Pimp Daddy had already made a name for himself as a well-known bounce rapper in New Orleans before he joined Cash Money, thanks to his popular local hit, Got To Be Real. Pimp Daddy's distinctive style significantly influenced Wayne, particularly during his early career, to the extent that Wayne initially adopted the rap alias Shrimp Daddy. When he was 18 years old, he released his debut album, Still Pimpin'. Pimp was reportedly said to be dating Miss T, another Cash Money Bounce artist. Not long after releasing his album, he was shot in the face and killed while sleeping on the couch in the Florida projects. Pimp Daddy's Pimpin' 80Z, 1996, came out a couple years after his untimely death. Some of the songs date from before his death, but others were more of a tribute in nature and reflect Manny Fresh's then new style. Earlier before she signed with Cash Money, Miss T met Ronald Williams from Cash Money at their talent search show and he gave him his card. After meeting Slim, T became a regular around Cash Money and eventually she got the chance to be featured on a Pimp Daddy records called Get Em Up At age 14, T had already made her mark in the industry. Get Em Up was her very first song, and it lead to her getting an album of her own called Having Things. At the tender age of 14, T entered into a contract in the music industry with little knowledge of publishing or royalties. A mother of a child while still a child herself, she was taken care of by baby and didn't even think about the business side of the music she was making. Her first car and apartment was bought by baby. In 1998, she parted ways with cash money. Mr. Ivan was a label fixture for a few years during Cash Money's initial rise before contractual disputes led to a falling out. He was often compared to Mystical, but in all actuality Mr. Ivan had regional success long before Mystical came onto the New Orleans rap scene. Many people remember Mr. Ivan always wearing a hockey mask at all concerts and public engagements. Magnolia Shorty's Monkey on the D released in 1997 was the final throwback to Cash Money's earliest years. Shorty had a lifelong relationship with the Cash Money team, specifically with Birdman, whom she considered a father figure, and her mentor, the late Soldier Slim. After signing her contract with the label, she became the second lady of the company, after Miss T. She often joined forces with fellow artists BG and Juvenile, working together on songs like Magnolia Shorty, paying tribute to her neighborhood, and Third Ward Soldier, featured on Juvenile's 1997 album, Soldier Rags. Before her death, she was to release her sophomore album Miss Bossy before being killed in a drive-by shooting by a local gang member in East New Orleans. She died on the scene. In 1995, during a block party, Cash Money artist Lil Slim was introduced to a then-12-year-old Dwayne Carter. 
Upon hearing Dwayne's rap skills, Lil Slim was profoundly impressed by his talent and subsequently brought him to Baby's attention. This led to Dwayne signing as the youngest artist under the Cash Money label. Adopting the moniker Baby D, Carter was then teamed up with another youthful rapper, BG, resulting in the formation of the duo known as the BGs. Their name, BG or Baby Gangsta, paid homage to Terrence Gangsta Williams, a figure of infamous street reputation. BG was born and raised in uptown New Orleans' 13th Ward. By most accounts, he lived as normal a childhood as one can expect in that rough neighborhood. Like many of his peers, he originally began rapping purely for fun. When he was 12 years old, he lost his father in a failed robbery attempt. This resulted in him losing interest in school and turned to selling weed and dope. On the side, he continued to rap with premature world weariness and his barber was impressed enough with the young one's skill that he recommended an audience with two of his other clients, Brian Baby and Ronald Slim Williams, the heads of the then-fledgling Cash Money Records. They liked what they heard and added him to their tiny roster and agreed to help look after him after his family moved to New Orleans East. For a short while, BG went to Abramson High School but soon dropped out. In 1995, BG and Lil Wayne then known as Lil Doogie and Baby, or Gangsta, D, respectively both made their debuts on Cash Money as the BGs before they were even old enough to attend high school. In 1997, Baby D and Lil Doogie renamed to Lil Wayne and BG, respectively, and that same year Cash Money signed two other new artists, Turk and Juvenile. Turk first hit the music scene in 1996 when Cash Money label owners Ronald Slim Williams and Brian Baby Williams spotted him rhyming in New Orleans Magnolia Project Yards. After maintaining persistence to be put down and dedication to developing his rhyming skills, Turk was asked to come to make a guest appearance on Juvenile's solo debut Soldier Rags, 1996. Juvenile initially rose to prominence alongside Bounce pioneer DJ Jimmy. Juvie had a brief but creatively limiting stint with a major label, Warlock, based in New York. Disenchanted with the industry, he put his rap career on the back burner and focused on performances at local clubs while working various day jobs. It was when he came across UNLV's track Drag M in the River that he felt a strong desire to rap over Fresh's beats. With Lilia facilitating a deal with Baby, Juvie signed with Cash Money and promptly released Soldier Rags in 1997. The four youngsters formed a group called the Hot Boys, a name they took from a Magnolia Project street crew that Terrence Gangsta Williams was involved with. This new bounce supergroup took Cash Money Records to a new level. The Hot Boys lineup originally included Birdman's nephew, Lil Derek, who was also known as Bulletproof. He left the label early on, before the Hot Boys ever released any albums. By 1997, the landscape of cash money had completely changed as the Hot Boys, Juvenile, Lil Wayne, BG and Turk, and the Big Timers, Manny Fresh and Baby aka Birdman, were the new focal points of the label that helped them strike a landmark deal with Universal Records. In 1998, Cash Money solidified itself as one of the top independent labels as they signed a landmark deal in the industry with Universal Records. The deal was worth $30 million. $3 million was paid in advance up front and they would get 85% of royalties and full ownership of their masters. Later that year, the label would strike gold with Juvenile's album 400 Degrees. A year later, it was certified for X Platinum. As the year 2000 drew to a close, the initial signs of fracture within the cash money empire started to surface. Behind closed doors, conflicts over finances began to come to light. Juvenile was the first to notice he was not getting compensated properly. Juvenile subsequently left cash money records. BG and Turk would soon follow putting their third album Let M Burn in Doubt although it was later released. Allegations of ghostwriting, issues over publishing rights, an extensive beef with Lil Wayne, and accusations against Birdman led to the departure of Gilly the Kid. Mac-10 has maintained an informal connection with cash money throughout the years. However, he departed from the label after releasing a single album to establish his own label, which later moved to Capitol. 
After a long hiatus from recording, the singer returned to the fold in 2002 and released two albums on Cash Money before her untimely death in 2010. TQ had some hits on the label but never actually dropped an album while signed. He wrote a lot of hooks and songs for the big timers while there, but left due to the shakeups and the label's rap-oriented focus. Buck has consistently refrained from making negative comments about cash money and continues to endorse both Baby and Wayne, even amidst their internal disputes. However, he had a stronger affiliation with Juvenile, and when Juvie parted ways with the label, Buck was subsequently signed by 50 Cent and G-Unit, marking a pivotal moment in his career. In 2004, Lil M.O. entered Cash Money with high expectations, releasing several moderately successful singles. However, her album remained unreleased, and she eventually parted ways with the label, a decision that occurred sometime after Hurricane Katrina.